Hi, welcome to the Megatecture channel. My name is Arthur and here's an overview video of architecture animation I recently made called Chateau, which I developed in Unreal Engine 5. Since I got a lot of questions about specific details and settings in this project, I decided to make this overview so it may be helpful for someone working on something similar. Let's get straight to the point. There are few key elements which I want to talk about. Lighting, texturing, foliage, camera composition and animation. And we will start with lighting. In my outliner, I have my lighting folder where I keep all the settings for lighting and atmosphere. Before I begin talking about each element, I need to tell you about a video from where I learned all the necessary settings for a photorealistic lighting. I will paste a link down below. Let's start with HDRI. This is how a project looks like with only HDRI on. I used an HDRI for this project as I think it offers the best outcome in terms of quality. If you don't need animated sky, the HDRI will be a perfect solution. Just pick a sky you like from Polyhaven and you are good to go. A tip from me is to use a pure sky HDRI so you won't have some buildings and trees in your background. You can add them yourself if you need to. Value for intensity is a little bit high, but that's ok. High intensity adds more details in reflections, so it's better to just change the exposure in post-process volume to your liking. Next is directional light. Here I also set the intensity as a really high value to match the intensity of HDRI. I also added a little bit of source angle and a warm temperature. For exponential height fog, I set fog density to 0.03 as it just adds a little bit of mist in the background to create a sense of distance. Last element is a post-process volume. Here the most important setting is exposure. Metering mode is set to auto exposure and exposure compensation is set to 1. This leads up the scene a little bit more. I also have auto exposure adaptation set both to 9. A bit of chromatic aberration for local exposure I have shadow contrast set to 0.8 as I think higher values makes shadows a little bit too dark for this project detail strength set, set to 1.2 Blurred Luminance Blend 0.3 and Middle Grey Bias 0.5 I also made some tweaks in the Midtone settings just a little bit lower Gamma and a little bit higher Gain Last thing I want to mention here is the film grey intensity, set to 0.3. For texturing and materials, I used a plugin called EasyMapper, 
It allows you to make use of vertex painting and blending of different materials from, for example, Megascans. I highly recommend this plugin, although you don't need it to achieve the same results. It just saves a lot of time and comes with a very handy set of values to tweak to your liking. Let's have a look at my brick texture. So these are parameters from EasyMapper. As you can see we can tweak a lot of values to get just the right amount of blending between materials we need. I will paste the link down below to the creator of this add-on where he explains in detail how this plugin works. To achieve a similar result as on mine brick texture where you get uneven blends of plaster and brick, you need to have a vertex paint. To do that, you go to the modeling mode, then attributes, and paint vertex colors. Here you can paint different layers of vertex paint, and then you just blend them with parameters that comes from EasyMapper. If I accept, you can already see that the plaster here is gone. I also use this method on pavement to mix it with sand. This effect works great on close-up also. Let me switch to the scene with wooden pot. For the foliage, I use just the foliage paint tool, although for the grass I think I use a fill tool, and at the end of painting grass I erased some of the patches of grass to create these like uh, darker areas, so the grass looks more natural that way. I also change the materials of the grass to bump up its color and translucency a little. The grass used here is called Grass Clamps from Megascans. I also scattered some European spindle, which you can also find on Megascans. While working on camera composition, I looked for some interesting camera angles throughout the project. You can save multiple cameras you like and tweak each scene differently, for example change lighting to your knees, or add something to block light and create shadows, like on this example. with a tree in the building or a floating tree let's switch to the camera view for a parallax effect I use the plugin called ArcVis Tools it's really handy as getting this effect in plain UE5 is quite tedious I will also paste the link down below. Animations here are really simple. For most of the scenes, the camera goes for 2 meters in about 5 seconds.
It's a very slow movement, but that allows the viewer to notice some crucial details. I have each part of animation saved as a different level sequence, so I can easily render what I want. I also have separate levels for each camera scene, so I can easily switch between them when I need it. For example, camera number one is tied to a level called Cam01. And if I switch to the level called Cam number two, I can also view the second camera. It's a little, little bit changed from the animation, but okay, here we go. I can also show you my render settings. They are really simple. I render straight into PNG. I use the deferred rendering method. And in the anti-aliasing tab I use none. One for the spatial sample count and 32 for temporal sample count. And lastly for the output I render straight into 4K. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview. Let me know if you found here something useful. If you do you can subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Stay tuned for next animations. So see you in the next video.